Hello everyone, welcome to Topic of the Day. In this edition, we shall be discussing about drug-resistant typhoid. Now recently, Lancet's study, as we know Lancet is a weekly medical journal, has flagged the emergence of drug-resistant typhoid strains. So let us discuss about typhoid and its prevalence. Now typhoid fever causes 11 million infections and more than 1 lakh deaths per year. Typhoid fever is a life-threatening systemic infection that is caused by the bacterium which is scientifically named as Salmonella enterica serova typhi, which is commonly known as Salmonella typhi. If we talk about the global spread, South Asia has accounted for 70% of the global disease burden. There has been cases of new strains for which there is only a single oral antibiotic remaining that is termed as XDR typhoid. Now the strains resistant to the antibiotic azithromycin, which is a very commonly used antibiotic, has been seen in India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Pakistan. Now let us discuss some of the Indian government's initiatives in this regard. First of all, Health Ministry is considering introducing new typhoid conjugate vaccines into the national immunization program. Now when we talk about a conjugate vaccine, it is a subunit vaccine which combines a weak antigen and a strong antigen as a carrier so that immune has a stronger response to the weaker antigen. Now what is antigen? An antigen is any substance that causes immune system to produce antibodies against it. Secondly, two World Health Organization pre-qualified vaccines have been developed in India. Now let us discuss about the antimicrobial resistance that is AMR. AMR occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites change over time and no longer responds to the medicines making the infections harder to treat. Now there is another term called superbugs. So what are superbugs? These are the strains of bacteria, viruses, parasites and fungi that are resistant to most of the antibiotics. The factors responsible include misuse and overuse of antimicrobials, poor sanitation, infection and disease prevention. We have lack of affordable medicines, vaccines and diagnostics awareness etc. Now let us discuss on some of the challenges posed by AMR. First of all, it makes infections harder to treat. It increases the risk of disease spread and severe illness and threats to organ transplantation, major surgeries etc. And it also causes out-of-pocket expenditure on high-order drugs and second-line expensive antibiotics. Now if we talk about some of the major global initiatives in this regard, we have the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance. We have the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week. And then there is Global Antimicrobial Resistance. Now when we talk about the major Indian initiatives, we have the Red Line Campaign, the National Health Policy 2017, and also we have the National Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance. Now let us discuss on, given these challenges, what can be the possible way ahead. First of all, we should focus on discovery of new drugs before the emergence of resistance in germs and also careful use of available antibiotics to ensure their efficacy for as long as possible. Secondly, policy alignment is also needed much beyond the health system. And lastly, solutions in clinical medicine must be integrated with improved surveillance of AMR in agriculture, animal health and the environment. Now let us take up a practice question on this topic from Maine's perspective. The antimicrobial resistance that is AMR is a looming global threat. In this context, discuss the measures that need to be taken to tackle this challenge. And with this we call it a wrap of today's edition of Topic of the Day. You can also study these topics in depth from the daily current affairs section on our website. And for regular updates, you can also follow us on our social media handles. This is Kritika signing off. I'll see you with more such videos. Till then, take care and do stay tuned.